What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. So in this video, I want to go over three NBA players that have a potential to be GOATs in the near future. Now, with these three NBA players, some of you may agree, some of you may disagree with me. Just take it for what it's worth. It's just my own, own opinion. Um, I'll be going over the player profiles, highlights, uh, stats, contracts, etc. So I kind of compare all three of them and see which one out of the three has the most potential to be uh, a future go. Now I think all of them, th all three of them have good potential, but one of them kind of shines, uh, one of them shines throughout uh, the rest of them, should I say. So this is, like I said, it's just my opinion. I'll take for its worth. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Peace. So the first future Hall of Famer, a.k.a. future possible GOAT, is Luka Doncic. Now, I regard Luka as probably the most dominant out of all the future uh, GOATs. And he has proven himself in and out. You just, I mean, he's already started his career superb above everybody else. As you guys can see, two-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year. Uh, his numbers speak for themselves. Not only his numbers, but you guys seen those highlights. He just, uh, he's very uh, transverse. He knows when to take shots. He knows when to pass. Uh, right now, the career average, he's averaging 25 points a game, seven assists, one steal. Um, so... I just think Luca is the future of basketball. He's he's the new face of basketball, and even now he's an international star. And guess what, folks? He's only 22 years old. 22 years old, and he's already established himself in the game of basketball. Now, looking over his contract, as you guys can see, he's he's pretty much guaranteed ten million. He's he signed a four year deal with the Mavericks, um, so that deal's guaranteed ten million, and he won't. It's going to be lasting through the twenty one and twenty two season. Um, that's 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 when the contract actually started. And he won't be a free free agent until the end of 2022. So you guys might see that it's very short. It might be coming up uh, on the Mavericks pretty soon that they need to extend his contract, do whatever they need to do to keep him. But I think the Mavericks would be insane to trade or to do anything else with Donjic other than keeping him. So he's definitely been a great asset to them. They won their division last season, um, and they are looking to go into the playoffs even more into the playoffs next or this upcoming season. The next future Hall of Famer GOAT I want to mention is Zion Williamson. Now going back to the first one, Luca. Luca's probably in my head. He's number one. Zion is probably number two. More than likely to succeed in the NBA, have a great career, and be a possible future Hall of Famer and a goat in the game of basketball. So looking at his over his stats, he started off just like Luca. He started off great numbers. Um, he is injury prone. I will say that. But when Zion is healthy, he's a complete, he dominates the game in basketball. Every, every game that he plays in, you see uh, how he shoots, how he, how he dominates inside the basket. Um, so he can definitely control a game at his own pace. 
the only downside with Zion is he's with the Pelicans. So the Pelicans is they don't he doesn't have weapons around him to help him. Um and I think that's probably a downfall of Zion is he doesn't have good players like him around him. So for him to carry a whole team, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of um, responsibility. And I don't think he can do it. I don't think he can do it by himself. He, even though he's dominant in every single game, I just don't think um, – I just don't think he can carry for the long haul. I don't think he can carry an entire team by himself. And it's been proven. It's been proven in every single situation, 90s, early 2000s. Um, every dominant player needs good basketball players around him. It's just how it is. Um, so let's go look over his contract. Same thing with uh, Luca. Zion's contract is for four years. Uh, and he's guaranteed $10 million out of that. He won't be a restricted free agent until 2023. So he has a little bit more time than Luka. And I would think that would be his best bet to get out of, um, to get out of the team of Pelicans. I think him making a transfer to any other team that establishes themselves pretty well. Um, I've heard some rumors, maybe social media, that he, he's he been interested in the Knicks, uh, the Heat. But we'll, we're we going to have to see. Right now, he's, he's, in, um, he's in New Orleans. There's really no way for him to get out of it, his contract, at, at least by himself. And like I said, he's not going to become a free agent until 2023. So... Let's see how I guess the role plays with Zion, but I'm either way. I think that he has a great potential uh, to be one of the greatest uh, basketball players of all time. The last player I want to mention is John Morant. John Morant was Rookie of the Year in 2019. Uh, he every time I see him play the game of basketball, he just he controls the game at his own pace. As a point guard and probably one of the point one of the all-time point guards to become he he looks down the line that to be one of the greatest point guards of all time and just like Luca and Zion jaw has started his career off with good numbers um, now a lot of people like to bag on Memphis because you know he's he's on Memphis but they forget to mention that he they did reach the playoffs last year. They didn't get far, but they did reach the playoffs, which gives some credit to John Morant. Um, and John Morant's even he there he's improving every year. So I have no doubt that you know him and the Grizzlies will take it even further in this upcoming season, upcoming playoffs. Uh, I have no doubt about that. But just. Overall, looking at Jaw, I think he has um, he has the weapons, he has the talent, and he's also only 22 years old. 22 years old, and he's already established himself in the league. So, Jaw Morant, I would say, is the best bet to be one of the greatest of all time. So, after talking about all three players' stats, contracts, highlights. I want to talk about their cards, okay? So this is just my preference. I I love Optic Hollow over the Prism Silvers. So for this example, I'm bringing up just the Optics, all three rookie cards in PSA 10 form, okay? So, and instead of going back 90 days, I actually went back a whole entire year. So of course, you guys would expect this. Luka Doncic, uh, Optic Hollow, PSA 10, happens to be the lead out of all three of them and it's currently worth last known sale of this card let me try to get it um, so about almost five thousand dollars okay so that is almost out of the price range of most collectors most investors I'm not I'm not bringing up these charts to say buy these right now because even then right now I can't even afford that what I'm just trying to explain to you guys is the movements within the year, within a year of all three cards. Okay, so 
it started off a year ago it started off at 4500 4500 4, 4, 4, and now it's gone up to almost 5,000. So it's a 10% increase from a year out, uh, Luca's Hollow. This is a card that I would love to have in my collection. I think I'm gonna go after more of the PSA 9s because they're more affordable. But as you guys can see, between Luca, John Moran, Zion, Luca, is, as far as card prices, he is way beyond the other two. So uh, right now it's not affordable. Will it ever go down? Possibly, but I only see the up, upside in the in this Optic Hollows um, for Luca, especially. Uh, switching over to Zion, Zion's PSA 10 Optic Hollow is currently going for about 1300. 1300 and a year out, it started off, started off around about the same price. So there was really no change. There was really no change between the Zion. Even, even if you go down to the John, John Morant Optic Hollow PSA 10, there was no really no change. I would say it's a, it's a loss of 10%. Start off at around 970 and ended around 860. So Jaws Optic Hollow is the only one out of all three of them that's actually lost them, but it's not that much. It's, it's a little over 10%. Um, I would say it's more affordable than the other two. Uh, the John Morant's 2019 Optic Hollow and PSA 10 is more affordable. Um, I would say that if you were to go to go after any of these three cards, John Morant would probably be the first one, and that would be the first one in my mind. Uh, but you can't go wrong with, with any of these three. I think all of them have great potential, especially now when the season's um, about to start. You have the hype around all these three players. You have the expectations. So um, I would think that later on in the season, maybe during the end of the, end of the playoffs or the end of the season, these prices will start going down. But it's all the hype right now. So these prices will remain or go higher uh, once the actual season starts. So that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.